So, ladies, gentlemen, honoured guests, I'm delighted to welcome you to the sixth annual Openness Awards and the 83rd Stephen Paget Memorial Lecture, which will be given this evening by Professor Dame Nancy Rothwell. As the current chair of UAR's council, it's been a privilege to see just how much the Concordat has grown since it developed from 2012. 2019 is no exception. As we celebrate five years since the launch and reflect on its achievements, we also look to the future and how the Concordat continues to evolve and encourage even greater openness amongst its signatories. You should have got a copy of the fifth report tonight, um, which details all the great work our Concordat signatories have done over the last year. And every year it's a real pleasure to see good practice supporting transparency around the use of animals research and the extent to which things have changed. There are, I believe, spare copies. Should you wish to take them back and share them with your friends, we'd be delighted. And I've been reminded I should thank the MRC very much who paid for the printing of the report. Looking back on the last five years, it's clear to see that the Concordat has had some big impacts within the life sciences community. Animal research facilities have greater profiles within their institutions, which has led to greater investment, more appreciation of animal care staff, and importantly, better animal welfare. There's also a greater access to information about animals in research from the organizations that carry out this work. More organizations than ever before are sharing images and videos of their research, their animal research statistics, and even details of the severity of the procedures. And for those interested in this type of work, there's much better access to see inside animal facilities, whether it's via open lab initiatives or virtual tours. And UAR has experienced fewer reactive communications on the use of animal research, I'm sure in part as a result of all this openness. Over the last five years, we've seen signatories collaborate with each other in the name of openness, and we're delighted the ethos of the Concordat has now spread well beyond the UK. In fact, today, the European Animal Research Association has launched a transparency agreement in Belgium based on the UK Concordat. But five years in, it was time to shake things up. All of our 122 signatories work hard to push openness within their organisations, but over the years we've seen some organisations driving the sector forward to be more transparent and more innovative with openness activities. We want to recognise these, so we developed Leaders in Openness, a new standard for organisations that are consistently achieving and embedding good practice. And recognising these organisations also allows us to provide clear examples of how good practice is being implemented. The leader standard isn't appropriate for all Concordat signatories, but those who choose to apply to become leaders in openness must demonstrate how they meet good practice criteria which are assessed by both the peers and the public. And after three rounds of assessment, which included review from the lay public, we were delighted to announce our first set of leaders in openness at the annual Concordat signatories event uh, last May. These 13 organisations will hold their status for three years but nominations will be open every year for other organisations wanting to apply. You'll also notice a new section in the annual report this year. We know from previous feedback that signatories want more case studies in the annual report, so that's what we've done. You'll find detailed case studies from how our new leaders in openness have been meeting the criteria for this new standard. Leaders in openness aren't to be confused with our long-standing openness awards. Those awards represent excellence communication in communications and innovation around the use of sorry excellence and innovation in communications around the use of animals research, and the winners are organisations pushing those boundaries and leading by example. I'd like to thank all our sponsors for their support this evening, and they're listed in the booklet. I want to thank our judging committee for their time and deliberations, and they ensure that the awards we're, we're going to give out encompass many facets of openness and meet the aims of the Concordat. And I'd like to thank you, Concordat Signatories, for your continued hard work to promote openness. Without your dedication, the Concordat would not be the success it clearly is today. So without further ado, it's time to present the 2019 Openness Awards. And the first award will be presented by Professor Roger Lemon. Roger is Emeritus Sabel Professor of Neuro <coughs> Neurophysiology at Queen's Square, and his main research interest is in the control of skilled hand movements by the brain and understanding why hand and finger movements are particularly affected by damage to the cortex and its major descending pathways as a result of stroke, spinal injury, or motor neuron disease. 
His experiments have involved the use of purpose-bred non-human primates, since these provide the best available model for the human sensory motor system. He's carried out parallel experiments in normal human volunteers and has sought to apply the knowledge gained from his work in monkeys to the effects of stroke on hand function in patients and to understand the process of recovery and to investigate therapies that might enhance recovery. He's actively involved in the public dialogue on the responsible use of animals in biomedical research and particularly, therefore, the importance of using non-primate, non-human primates as models of complex neurological and neurodegenerative disease. Roger's been a long-standing friend to UAR. He spent many years advising us during his time on council and our policy subgroup. And he also, he also helped to establish the UK Primate Expert Group, and he's previously been on our Openness Awards judging panel. Please join me in welcoming Professor Roger Lemon. Thank you very much, Jeremy, and uh, good evening, everybody. And it's my, uh, my privilege to uh, talk about the award in the first category, which is internal or sector engagement. And I was quite fascinated by this award because uh, it reflects, I think it does something about the problem that I think is, is uh, recognized in many research institutes of, of how those working in animal research um, actually are able to talk outside of their institutions uh, about the work that they do, and that which of course can sometimes be rather upsetting uh, when you, for instance, go home after the, uh, a day where you had to carry out various um, unpleasant duties, including uh, euthanasia of animals that have already served their purpose in the research. While most people in most sorts of jobs are able to share their work ups and downs with their family and friends, um, I think for those working in animal research, it can sometimes be quite uh, difficult. Um, if you open up fully to exactly what you do, that can expose you to a barrage of questioning uh, and can actually uh, lead to uh, quite difficult uh, interactions. So how do you tackle that, that sort of problem? How do you talk about the work that you do? Well, results from a staff uh, survey at the, at, the, at the winning university of this award uh, suggested that a first step might be to actually bring all the colleagues together, uh, who are all of whom are involved in the work, uh, so that they at least could talk amongst themselves about their different experiences um, uh, with animal research. So in response, the university organized a tribute to Animals Day uh, to recognize and respect the contribution of research animals um, that, had been, that, they, that they had made, those animals had made, to the progress of research at that university. Um, and to, to generally to celebrate the benefits of, the, of that science. In a large um, research university, this, this uh, event um, was a rare opportunity to bring together all those involved in the research, including technologists, researchers, all the way down to the principal establishment. <coughs> um, it also included a section on the impact of the research um, on, uh, uh, in, in different fields, including clinical progress, uh, actually included a, a talk by a research, uh, an NHS research nurse, um, uh, and she explained how uh, talking to patients about the re current research that was going on was an invaluable uh, way of explaining to patients the importance of animal research. Um, so overall, this was, a, a, I think, an, an, an enterprising idea. The judging committee thought it was an excellent example of uh, how to uh, show culture of care in the university, provision of institutional and wider uh, personal support networks for those working there. And they were impressed to see how uh, the whole institution, including its senior staff, had been engaged uh, in setting up this event. And so I'm delighted to present the award for internal or sector engagement to Newcastle University.
And so to the second award, it's my pleasure to welcome Ken Appleby, who will present the second award. Having begun his career as a junior animal technician a few years ago, Ken is now Director of Biological Services at King's College London. He was a member of UAR's council for six years, and until May he served as Chair and CEO of the Institute of Animal Technology. He's a founding trustee of Animals in Science Education Trust, and the Chair of the Board of the Trustees of the College of Laboratory Animal Science and Technology. Sorry, I had to turn a page over. And for six years, until May, a member of the Government's Animal and Science Tech, uh, Committee. One of Ken's ongoing major professional interests is in the profession and development of education and training for laboratory animal care staff. And in 2014, he was quite rightly awarded the OBE for services to animal technician education and animal technology. He complained that in this CV we'd left out the fact that he's a Hammers fan. I don't know whether that's relevant. Uh, please join me in welcoming Ken Appleby. Well, thank you very much. I've been told to try and stick to the script and know ad living for reasons that heard people have heard me speak before. Uh, I'm presenting an award on public engagement activity, and I think some of us, as sort of hinted at earlier, who are a bit more mature, uh, can remember how things were with the general public, say, 20, 25 years ago. And I think it's a measure of how far we've come that when you read the nominations for this award, uh, which is most welcome and, in fact, makes things in a working environment, and not only for us, but it gives the general public an in on what we actually do. And I think any time we show people around our facilities, I think uh, they're quite amazed at the efforts we go to, both for animal welfare and for good science. Uh, the judging committee was impressed with this university's approach to a public engagement event. This event was held in a public space and was truly for the public, as it was open to anyone who signed up. They created a dedicated time and space where those who are interested could ask questions about animal research and welfare. The seniority and profile of the staff and the researchers who took the time to get involved with this activity and talk to the public about their work was a striking feature of this event. The judges felt that a good mix of science and welfare was presented, but what made this activity stand out was a dedicated question and answer section something which saw the staff involved deal with some complex and interesting questions from the public. None of this was screened or without any prior knowledge of what questions would be asked. Therefore, I'm thrilled to present the award for public engagement activity to the University of Edinburgh. The evening is going to be presented by Professor Rothwell, tonight's lecturer. I'll introduce Nancy more fully later before her lecture, but for now, just join me in welcoming her to the stage. Thank you. It's a great pl pleasure and a privilege to be making this award for media engagement or media stories, uh, something that has become more common, but at one time was almost unheard of for anybody to go onto uh, television or radio to talk about animal research. And it's still quite a brave thing to do. So this year, the judging committee was impressed by one particular media story. The winning organisation proactively invited a BBC journalist to its animal facilities to record a radio broadcast. The judges felt that the researchers involved in that broadcast spoke informatively and sensitively about difficult topics, such as cervical dislocation, giving mice lung cancer, and the numbers of animals used. Not easy topics to tackle. 
The judges were particularly impressed by how the researchers answered these difficult questions, as well as speaking realistically about the benefits of the research and the differences and similarities between mice and humans. This is indeed a truly excellent piece of work. So please join me in congratulating the winner of the Media Engagement or Media Stories Award, the Francis Crick Institute. next award will be presented by Ross Millard. Ross is Managing Director of Agenda Resource Management Limited, having joined them in September. During his 18 years within life sciences, he's worked with numerous universities, government funded bodies and charities to facilitate improvements in staff working conditions, animal welfare provision and consistency of research. He's Treasurer of the IAT Oxford branch, a position he held for nearly 10 years. Please join me in welcoming Ross. Thank you. It's a, a real pleasure to be uh, presenting the award in the category website uh, or use of new media. Uh, talking about animal research statistics and putting these big numbers into context can be difficult. But the judging committee were impressed that this university found an innovative hook to promote its statistics. Thanks to well-made infographics, this media campaign was clear, engaging and the data was not sanitised. This was a brave piece of work that reached a lot of people. It's not every day that a Concordat signatory can coordinate an animal statistics campaign around the arrival of a cute baby llama. But this university seized the opportunity perfectly. Please join me in congratulating the winner of the website or new media award, the University of Reading. The final award this evening is going to be presented by Wendy Jarrett, our Chief Executive. Wendy has 30 years of experience of communicating complex and sometimes controversial issues to the public. Whether that's important for this particular speech, I'm not sure. Uh, she joined one of UAR's predecessors, the CMP, in 2004 and worked on merging with the Research Defence Society to form UAR in 2009. Following a brief spell at NICE, she returned to UAR as Chief Executive in November 2012. She's Vice President of the IAT and she sits on the Animals in Science Committee. Please join me in welcoming Wendy. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, I want to say again that we are really grateful to our judging panel for the annual openness awards that you've just seen. We know they sometimes struggle to decide on the winners because it's we do get a really high quality of entries and it is a bit of an invidious task so I'd like to take the opportunity to thank them again for their time and for taking it off UAR shoulders and onto somebody else's so thank you very much for that. Um, but each year the UAR team presents its own award to an individual who we feel has consistently gone above and beyond their work to support openness in animal research. This year, the more astute among you will have realised that we couldn't decide on one person so we're actually giving two awards alphabetically first, is somebody that many of you will know, but it's probably not a household name. Um, the name of the organisation they work for has changed a few times over recent years, but they have consistently worked to help the public understand why animals are used in research, and in particular how research animals are bred and acclimatised for life in a research facility. 
This person has organised media visits into their facilities, both reactively, following really quite nasty negative media coverage, and then proactively, in order to help prevent future misleading media stories. They've also worked behind the scenes to try to improve openness right across the sector. I'm really delighted to present the first of this year's individual openness awards to Val Summers. we'd like to recognise this year has also been prepared to work with the media in both reactive and proactive situations. They've helped us as an organisation on numerous occasions when we have been looking for somebody who can talk to journalists, to MPs and others about the realities of animal research. They've helped us to develop the Concordat and they continue to support it wherever they can. They also work on behalf of the sector as a whole, liaising with the Home Office, chairing meetings, giving media briefings. I'm amazed sometimes that they manage to do all this, as well as a high-level day job aimed at treating a horribly cruel inherited condition. Our second individual award this year goes to Professor Nick Wells. <laughs> Thank you, that's so unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.